In today's video, I'm gonna talk about neighborhoods that I think you should avoid buying in in 2022, and we're starting right now. Hey, my name is Sam Sansalone, and I'm a real estate agent in the Hampton Roads area that goes from the border of Virginia all the way up through Williamsburg, and I do videos every week about living and moving to the area. Today, we're talking about neighborhoods that I think you should avoid buying in Norfolk. Now, the definition of avoid, it can get a little bit dicey, and so when I say avoid, these are in reference to investment factors that I think that could influence the future value of property if you do buy in these areas, and things that I would be cautious about if you're staying in the area for a length of time in Norfolk. Because of fair housing laws, I can't get into other details that might shift into that. So I'm focusing on things like traffic, amenities around the areas, how long do houses stay on the market regularly in an area, the general prices of a neighborhood, and also flooding concerns in that area because there are places that are getting higher uh, flood insurance premiums. And so I'm gonna go through the map and show you as we talk about each neighborhood where each one is and some specifics about what I'm what I'm thinking about in each neighborhood. So if you're looking on the map, you got Norfolk right here. Norfolk's just uh, west of Virginia Beach, north of most of Chesapeake, and so I'm to show you first the first neighborhood is Larchmont and you've heard me probably talk about Larchmont before and I love it for a ton of reasons I think the houses are amazing the feel of the neighborhoods awesome and it's in a spot in Norfolk that you know, it has some stuff going on. Because in large part, you can get houses in the three, upper threes range, upwards of, I mean, you can go over a million dollars on the water. So there's a big range there, but really 350 to 400, upwards of five to six is the most common in this Larchmont area. Three, four bedrooms, you know, two, two and a half baths a lot of times. You can get some smaller ones in here too, which does add to the flexibility that people have for a place like this. But there are some things about Larchmont that I think are very worth noting and I would be concerned about uh, if you're buying in this area in the, in the future. So number one is the traffic and the commute time coming around Larchmont to other places. One of the things is that Larchmont is also often associated in some ways with Ghent. Now, the problem though is that the difference between Larchmont and Ghent primarily is that walking distance to things is a lot harder. You can't get to as many places uh, in Larchmont as you can in Ghent. Uh, so there's just not as much happening. You're closer to ODU, but not as close to a lot of the other restaurants. And so if you want to get to there, you have to still drive your car most of the time. There are some cut throughs, but it's just not something that's super ideal. So that's number one. Number two is Hamden Boulevard gets real busy. And so if you don't want that, that hustle and bustle, you don't want to be that close to a place like Hamden Boulevard. It's going to be very difficult because any place you want to go to outside of the area is going to require you to drive down Hamden Boulevard potentially for a long period of time. So if you look on large mile on the map, you'll see the west side of Hamden Boulevard here. This is Hamden Boulevard. And on the east side, you've got Edgewater on this side. This whole whole section here is what I'm talking about. Now, if you go down south and north, it's connected by this road called Hampton Boulevard. It goes all the way down towards the tunnel, the Midtown Tunnel, through Ghent, all the way that connects to Portsmouth. It also goes down towards downtown Norfolk, uh, along the, the south side of Norfolk. Then it goes on the north side, it goes up towards uh, Norfolk Navy Base. Number three is the flooding. So if you look at Larchmont and Edgewater, not all of it is, full, is in a high risk flood zone in what's considered AE. But in the north and northeastern sections of, this, of the uh, area is where most of this area has the flood zone concerns. Now, when I'm talking about that, I'm saying La the Lafayette River here, there's a lot of tidal water that can come up off uh, out of the uh, river onto shore in certain parts of uh, the area. So in these, some of these cul-de-sacs, some of these uh, small little peninsulas, especially in the northern sections, uh, until you get to closer to near uh, Buckingham or, or Brunswick, sorry, Buckingham and Brunswick right here, um, that section going south, it's not as big of a deal as far as high risk uh, on a regular basis. But then if you go again further up and further east, you'll see more frequency of this. And so uh, if you do stay in this area for you know decades, you know, 10, 20 years, you might see this become more of an issue and maybe flood insurance starts increasing even more. And as that happens, you might see your property values, they might be offset a little bit based on this flood insurance pa uh, policy because that flood insurance has to factor into a person's loan and sometimes their qualifications could be in impacted based on not just the payment uh, for the mortgage, but also the flood insurance and added to that. So another thing to factor in with large Mont and Edgewater. Now, shifting attention over to the east, and it's kind of the central part of Norfolk, like great smack dab in the middle. You see this section over here called Estabrook. Estabrook is a general area uh, in and around the Five Points neighborhood or area in Norfolk, which is where this big intersection is right here. 
The reason this, this matters is because it's not just Estabrook, it's kind of this whole general area around Greenwood, Norview Heights, this whole thing. There's some great value to be had here and uh, flood insurance isn't as big of a deal as unless you get closer to Wayne's, Wayne Creek, but the problem is that you see where Estabrook is located in a reference to uh, the rest of the area. You've got uh, going to the north, you're, you're basically surrounded by weird intersections. So Sewell's Point, uh, the Five Points area where I just mentioned, that whole section here is a nightmare for traffic. Not just the construction happening now, but it, they call it Five Points. There are literally five, like actually there's six, I guess, points, but it it's crazy, <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, and it's hard to remember which direction you're gonna go. Then if you go south and also southeast, you'll find areas down near Chesapeake Boulevard down here, Cromwell Drive, similar kind of weird intersection over here too. And then if you go down in the southeastern section over here, you've got Elizabeth Garden Boulevard and Sewell's Point over here, which is another weird, like, this, there's three, if not, I think more, um, weird multi-intersection convergence points uh, in the area around this Estabrook area. And so traffic in around here, while it's not like, it's not drive driving over down Hampton Boulevard, it's not like that kind of backup all the time, but it's super confusing, super frustrating to get in and out of here. Now you can get good value in here. There are houses in here in the 200s, low 200s, mid 200s, upper 200s. Now the new construction, newer construction is three to 350 for the most part, but you know, for what you're getting, it's not bad if you want something that's you know functional housing, three, sometimes four bedrooms, you know, one and a half, one, two bathrooms, and just general accessibility to most things. But it can still be very, very frustrating to live in this area traffic-wise and just commute road road style-wise. Another thing I want to mention about Estabrook in this general area is there are some houses in here that are newer construction. There are a lot of houses built in the like 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s, but then there are some newer construction houses in here, like in the 2000, the 2010, 2015, sometimes even new construction popped up in here, pops up in here. Um, the reason this matters is because a lot of these houses that were newer are getting older. <laughs> so houses built in like the 2002, three, four, five, and six range now are getting to be about 15 to 20 years old. Why does that matter? It matters because your large systems are starting to get old. Your HVAC system, your roof, your water heater. These things start aging and 15 to 20 years is getting to the end of a lot of these lifespans. And so if you buy a house thinking that you're gonna get a newer house, newer feel, all that, the kind of newer stuff, not as much work, you might find that the work you might have spent renovating a, a bedroom or renovating a bathroom or kitchen might have been now shifted over to re uh, replacing an HVAC system, spending 12 grand for a roof. All that money that you could have put towards the house that you wanted, now you have to put towards uh, systems in the house because they're needing replacement. That's a big thing about Estabrook and a lot of parts of Norfolk where these newer construction houses are now starting to get older. And another thing about Estabrook in that area is that it is not close to a lot of grocery stores, a lot of convenience stuff. There are some, some mom and pops and a couple food lines randomly, but there's not a whole lot. If this is helping you at all, I would greatly appreciate it if you hit that like button for the YouTube algorithms. It really actually does make a big difference and it tells other people like you that could also use this information too. Now let's shift the tension down south in south parts of Norfolk called an area called Campostella. Okay, Campostella is interesting because again, it has some of, the, some of the same style houses that you might see in Larchmont, you might see in Ghent. And the houses built like the 1900s to 1960s, you'll see a lot of those. The house prices in here are sometimes even in the 100s. 100s and 200s, newer construction uh, in the three to 350 range. So the prices are great, what's the problem? Now, first of all, <clears throat> similar thing situation as what's in Estabrook, you know, th that area where the newer houses in here that look great, you're like, okay, I can get a newer house in here for, for 300. Well, same thing. A lot of these were built in the 2000, 2005, six time period. And so you'll find that as time goes on, same problem, systems need to be replaced. That's number one. Number two is, it is in a weird location. So Berkeley Avenue is right here. Campostella is also next to Berkeley, which is another part of the area I'm, I'm kind of uh, referring to. This road, road on Berkeley is actually somewhat functional. It's somewhat easy to, easy to commute back and forth to, but once you get to 464, 464, on one hand, again, is convenient because you're close to the interstates. Well, the, the problem is, is that this area, 464 to 264, backs up a lot coming out of the area towards Berkeley. And so getting to the tunnel, going across 264 towards Portsmouth, if that's another area that you're thinking about, and saying, I can go over here, get a cheap house, go across the water, 
that is not as convenient as you might think. And then also going up to the bridge towards downtown Norfolk, again, the accessibility is there. It's the convenience to use the accessibility that is part of the problem here. And it's also, you can also go around the Cambastell Road going that way. That is easier to me, but still you have to go a bit around. It's just not as convenient as it might seem uh, on the map. Now, one thing I think about when I'm thinking about investment and value for money over time, like right now, the market is increasing. It's been increasing a lot very quickly. And so what I look at and I say, okay, what happens in a, in a downturn market in this general area? So after the 2005 and six time period when house prices were going, going up quite a bit, and then the house prices dropped quite a bit in 08, 09, 2010 and up, I look to see what areas have higher uh, days on market uh, expectancy. So when demand goes down in any area, what are the areas that have the highest propensity to stay on the market longer? And that to me factors into my protection for my investment. And as far as Campus Stella goes, this is an area that has one of the higher uh, concentrations of houses that were on the market a lot all over 100 days or more uh, over the last 10 years in any other, almost any other neighborhood in Norfolk. And so that tells me that unless something drastically changes as far as demand, if house prices drop, I think that Campostella could have some other concerns for you maybe maybe holding onto a property longer than you might want when you want to sell it, if history would repeat itself. Now, going back up further north, up into an area close to where I've talked about a lot before, in an area called Winona. So Lafayette, I've talked about Lafayette before, I've never really mentioned Winona too much, but Winona, Nice area. If you look on the map, uh, you'll see as you sit there and drive through, you'll notice that older style house with the, the sidewalks, nice trees. It's a great neighborhood for the style houses that people find that are very, very popular right now. Uh, it's, I think it's like, fantastic. Larger houses sometimes, sometimes smaller, three bedrooms, got one, one and a half baths sometimes, but they range anywhere from, you can get them in the uh, low 300s, upwards of 400, and sometimes higher than that, depends on the size of the house. Which in theory is great because it's hard to find this style of house in a neighborhood that people like in a convenient area in, in Norfolk. Here's the part of the problem. You're on La the Lafayette River, and the Lafayette River near here has a propensity to create some flood insurance issues as you get off of the coast. So, not everywhere in Winona has requires flood insurance, but the flood maps have changed. You'll see a majority, I'd say, uh, of this area, in this uh, Winona area, requires flood insurance. And so you might think, oh my gosh, I can get a house for 340 in here, 330. Uh, and it's way better than even just going a mile or two away for the same price. Well, again, the reality is that you might be paying an extra thousand dollars or so a year, maybe more than that, for flood insurance, uh, depending on which, which house and which what you get with your elevation certificate. So, Remember that when you're looking in this neighborhood because the prices don't always tell you the entire story. Now, on a note for flood insurance, when you do try and look for a house that might require flood insurance, see if you can get an elevation certificate that will show you the location of where that house is in relation to the property. That will help insurance companies determine how much to charge you for flood insurance. That can make a huge difference. If you do, if you do not have a, an elevation certificate, uh, a flood insurance quote could be way more than what you might get for the same house if you got a house, if you got an elevation certificate uh, for that house. So if you do have, it, ask the seller, if, the, if you're looking to buy a house, ask the seller to see if they might have one. Uh, you can also uh, order one as well, but it just takes longer, a couple of weeks sometimes. So that will make a big difference for payment. So just keep that in mind for uh, flood insurance anywhere in the area. Now the thing is, you're right off Tidewater Drive. And so Tidewater Drive itself, I mean, it's a, again, a pretty convenient road going north and south uh, in Norfolk. But you might find that Tidewater Drive, you'll notice a change as you go up and down different parts of Tidewater Drive. And so uh, depending on what you're looking for, what you like, you might notice that an area that you're looking for, like in Winona, might feel different as you drive just a uh, you know, quarter mile or so away from different parts of the area. So if you have any questions at all about Norfolk or the areas around Norfolk Hampton Roads, I have videos here that give more detail and context about the area. And if you want to relocate to the area, you have any questions, you let me to help you, reach out to me anytime you'd like to. I have my contact information in the description. You can do it anytime and I'll do whatever I can to help you. And I will see you on the next video.